Hello my dear students, I'm Dr. Vaishali Bharamwe. I've been teaching anatomy for the last 25 years and I love it. This lecture is a part of my central nervous system lecture series titled as Spinal Cord. So I, my VB anatomy has come up with a number of lectures on spinal cord, my 13 to 14 lectures. These lectures consist of I said, lectures on cross anatomy, ascending tracks, descending tracks, MCQs and so on. Today we are going to talk about spinal cord, dorsal column pathways and related lesions. So today's the link for all other lectures is given in the description section. Do go and watch those as well to understand spinal cord completely. So spinal cord anatomy, dorsal column pathways and related spinal cord lesions. Uh, so if I say dorsal column tracts or pathways, which tracts am I talking about? I am talking about fasciculus gracilis which is also called tract of Gall, G for G remember, fasciculus cuneatus or tract of Burdock. So these are the two tracts I am going to talk about today. So what are ascending tracts? Remember when your cortex must be aware of your body on the surface and inside all the time. So all the time human body is sending signals back to your cortex. They can be signals from your body surface, exteroceptive or signals from within the body, proprioceptive. Okay? All this the cerebral cortex has to receive so that it can respond and take care of the body. So accordingly, there are a number of ascending tracks carrying this information to your cortex. They are fasciculus, gracilis and cuneatus, anterior posterior spinocerebellum, anterior lateral spinothalamic and spinotectal. Is that all? That's all are the seven ascending tracks. Actually there are many many more. But we don't do all of them at the same time. Okay? You take only that much size of a morsel as you can chew and eat. You don't eat the whole watermelon at the same time. You take it in bites. That's what we are doing. We are studying things systematically in small digestible bites. Hmm? So. These are the ones you should know thoroughly first and then you can study all others as well. So posterior funiculus tracts or fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. So what are these tracts called as? They are called as fasciculus gracilis cuneatus or tracts of Gall and Burdock. Where are they located? They are located in the posterior funiculus of spinal cord such that Gall is situated medially and tract of burdock a little lateral to it. Hmm? So, ye location ho gaya. What is the modality they are carrying? What is going up to the cortex through these tracts? Fine touch. When your mom just runs her hand along your cheek gently. Fine touch. Or discriminative touch. You feel two fingers and I know they are two. Discriminative touch and pressure sense of vibration, sense of, so when, when there was an earthquake somewhere, one would feel the vibration, okay? You don't have to go looking for it, you can feel it, right? Stereognosis, somebody puts a 10 rupee coin in your hand versus puts a 1 rupee coin in your hand, you don't have to see it to know, you know this is 10 rupee and this is 1 rupee, stereognosis, okay? Conscious sense of position, movement of the muscle and joints, where all the time consciously aware of what is the position of our body. We don't have to look to see where is my foot. We know it's there okay, and where it is exactly in what position. All this is being uh, reported to the cerebral cortex by the posterior funiculus tracts. So uh, before we do these tracts, you need to understand concept of what is first order neuron, second order neuron, third order neuron. What actually is a tract. Okay? Uh, these basics I cannot cover in every lecture. So I have covered it in my lecture on pain, temperature, touch, pressure pathways. I request you to go check that lecture out so that you will get these concepts quickly. Just remember there will be three neurons in this uh, tract okay? and somebody is a tract if it is 
consisting of fibers which are taking origin from similar cells which are present in a particular location in the spinal cord which are carrying the same modality and which are relaying in the same area in the cerebral cortex. Learn about this from that and let us move further. Let us quickly take a preview of what is this posterior funiculus tract. Pehle, let us just understand a little bit about it and then we will go into details. So, I want you to imagine that you are feeling fine touch on your hand. Okay? Imagine, I would love it if you actually did it. Just run your hand, do not don't just grab your hand. Okay? Just gently run your hand on your arm. So, this is picked up by the receptor and receptor hands it over to a neuron which is lying in the dorsal root ganglion of spinal cord over here. You can see it here. So, this is picking up that sensation and carrying it inside the spinal cord, taking it into the posterior funiculus, ascending upwards to the medulla oblongata. So, this neuron who picked it up first is called as the first order neuron. Okay. It hands it over to a neuron lying in medulla which I am going to call as the second order neuron. The thing this neuron does it, it crosses to the opposite side and then ascends upwards on the contralateral side to relay into the thalamus. In the thalamus there is a neuron who is the third neuron picking up this sensation. He, that neuron carries this to the contralateral cerebral cortex and this fine touch is felt in your brain. Hmm? Brain realizes that somebody is gently running their hand on your hand. Okay? So, all this has happened. Picked up by the receptor, picked up by first order neuron in dorsal root ganglion, picked up by second order neuron in medulla oblongata, handed over to third order neuron in the contralateral thalamus and experienced in the cerebral cortex on the opposite side of the cortex. Okay? So, this is basically your posterior column pathway. Remember that fibers crossed over to the opposite side in, in the at the level of medulla oblongata. This is very important. I will tell you why and all I will teach you that. Right. So, let us talk a little bit more about this in detail now. Sensation is felt. The receptor picks it up hands it over to the first order neuron. Where does the first order neuron lie? The neuron is a body. So, the body of the neuron lies in the dorsal root ganglion. Okay? Its peripheral process is in touch with the receptor. Its axon is entering inside the spinal cord. So, it picks up the sensation here, carries it inside, hands it over by carrying it inside the posterior grey horn of spinal cord. But does it hand this over? No, it does not. It just begins to carry this up in the form upwards to relay into the higher centers. It does not uh, hand it over into the posterior grey horn, which is what happens in pain temperature pathway. So, while it is entering into the spinal cord, it is giving out ascending and descending fibers as well, which are is responsible for upper and lower levels remaining all the time aware of um, what, what sensations are coming in. So, intersegmental communication happens. So, take a look. Hmm? This there was fine touch, it was picked up by the first order neuron here in the dorsal root ganglion carried into the posterior grey horn, carried into the posterior funiculus and ascended upwards in the posterior funiculus to finally reach into the medulla. Now, little bit about these fibers. If these fibers are from sacral, lumbar or lower thoracic region, then all these fibers will enter into fasciculus gracilis here. But if they are from upper 6th thoracic and cervical region, all the fibers will enter into fasciculus cuneatus. Right? So, the body is represented like this. Limbs medially, the lower limbs medially and the rest of the body laterally. Okay? Take a look again. So, these are all the representations as 5 onwards. Okay? And the body is represented like this. So, if there is a central injury here, 
the person would lose sensation first in the sacral region then in the lumbar region. This is called somatotopic arrangement of fibers. So, from the sacral, lumbar, thoracic, cervical fibers have gone and sat in fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus and they are ascending upwards to the level of medulla. Okay. Have we changed the neuron yet or is it the same neuron who is functioning up till now? It is the same neuron. No handover has happened yet. Same neuron which has picked up the sensation has brought it up to the level of medulla oblongata, lower medulla. Okay. This is a section of lower medulla. This, these are fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus and therefore they are carrying sensations from the body. What they do now is they hand over this into the grey matter of the medulla where there is nucleus cuneatus and nucleus gracilis. So, fasciculus gracilis relays into nucleus gracilis, fasciculus cuneatus relays into nucleus cuneatus. Once the relay is done, the job of first order neuron is over. Kaam ho gaya, I am going to now aram karunga. I am going to just enjoy. Who is now going to start working? The second order neuron. The neurons of the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus work as second order neurons in the dorsal column pathway. What do they do? They cross over anteriorly. Those from fasciculus cuneatus cross over such that they come to lie more posteriorly. Those from fasciculus gracilis cross a little more anterior. I want you to do this action crossing over, crossing over. Okay. Gracilis is going more anterior, cuneatus is going more posterior. And finally, they form a fiber bundle which is called medial lemniscus. Okay. These crossing fibers are called internal arcuate fibers, arcuate forming an arc. And this kind of crossing is called the great sensory decussation. Okay. Great sensory decussation. There is also a great motor decussation. If you see a lecture on spinal cord and pyramidal tract, you will understand that. So now finally sensation for which was felt on my left hand, the loving touch which was felt on my left hand has finally crossed over and is go, going to be carried up on my right side medulla oblongata, onwards, upwards, through which fiber bundle? Medial lemniscus. Okay. And the body representation is like this. Okay, lower limb forward, upper body backward. Points to note, what all has happened up till now? First order neuron ended at the level of lower medulla. Second order neuron came on duty now. Fibers of second order neuron crossed over to the contralateral side. There was crossing of fibers were called internal arcuate fibers. And this was called as the great sensory decussation. Formation of a new bundle called medial lemniscus, which body representation is lower limb forward, upper limb backward. Finally, medial lemniscus begins to ascend upwards. Okay. A peculiar fact, which is the longest neuron of the body, do please come here and read up. Okay. I, if I keep on teaching you all these things, then it, the lecture becomes too long. But yeah, this comes as an MCQ and it is a very fun fact. Right. So, the sensation has reached medulla oblongata, the second order neuron has crossed over and started to ascend upwards as you can see. So, events, formation of medial lemniscus and crossing side, two very important events. Side has crossed onto the opposite side and new bundle formed medial lemniscus, right. Now, they go to pons here, now they go to medulla. Uh, sorry, midbrain here. Body representation keeps on rotating. Okay. So, why do we have to know? Because then the lesion can be kind of anticipated. That is all. Now, finally, these fibers are sent up. Which neuron are we talking about? Second order neuron. Relays in the VPL nucleus of thalamus. Okay. So, crossing over in medulla relay into third into the VPL nucleus of thalamus where now the third order neuron begins. Third order neuron carries this to the cerebral cortex. How? 
through what how does it go take a look so as it begins to ascend upwards from thalamus okay it forms what is called as thalamic radiation this thalamic radiation passes through internal capsule you must be thinking madam how does it matter why do you want to teach us all this of course it matters because if you have an internal capsule lesion okay your thalamic radiation might be damaged if thalamic radiation is damaged this lovely fine touch that i felt okay which i had taken the effort to carry till the thalamus is no longer able to reach my cerebral cortex i have i have hemianesthesia because my fibers are cut in the middle now and my body can no longer feel that fine taste touch sensation internal capsule lesion shows this that's why you should know the tract along its entire path not only its ending right so finally the sensation is relayed in cerebral cortex ma'am what is this you have drawn on the screen i have drawn what is called sensory homunculus can you see the size of the lips and the size of the face on the cerebral cortex and the size of the leg head trunk tiny hai na so who decides how much of the cortex is to be given to my lips or my face or to my hand for that matter the complexity of sensations coming from that area how complex can a sensation come from your abdominal wall whereas how complex can the sensation be which are coming from your lips or from your face okay so that according to the complexity of sensations area is accorded in the cerebral sensory cerebral cortex area 312 so this sensation has reached there uh, what sensations let's repeat once sensation of touch deep touch pressure two point discrimination i can see feel two points here i can feel two points here to be able to tell how far apart these two are is two point discrimination tactile localization ability to recognize an object without having to look at it just by feeling it i know this is a cup i know this child knows that that the app that in his hand is an apple okay so this is stereognosis okay and finally conscious sense of body position all this is now felt in the cerebral cortex right just note that cerebral cortex area 312 is not just listening to uh, ascending tracks it is also doing something proactive okay it's giving out descending tracks which are reaching the point of entry and to some extent modulating the ascending sensations think you wore a very rough material shirt initially you were so irritated you keep feeling you know oh god this is so rough this is so irritating after a point of time your body gets used to that sensation and you are wearing it kind of comfortably because all some, many of the sensations which are ascending up have been modulated and suppressed this is called sensory modulation this happens in every tract except for pain okay even when you stand in a on a railway station and you're talking with your friend there is so much noise how can you hear what your friend is saying because you are able to suppress the extra sound and just focus on the sound of your friend's voice okay sensory modulation think about it right so lesions of fasciculus gracilis what will they be like so what happens there is loss of tactile localization and discrimination ye do hai ye ek nahi that person is unable to tell but does he lose touch no he doesn't why does he not lose touch because anterior spinothalamic tract is already there carrying touch so touch is a modality which won't be completely lost unable to judge degrees of pressure a stereognosis i no longer know what this is in my hand i open my eyes i look and i say cup but when i close my eyes i didn't know okay so a stereognosis inability to judge a weight of an object okay because i no longer get sensations back so how gently should i lift this cup i do not know okay um loss of sense of vibration loss of muscle joint sense all this happens to a person with lesion of fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus the person is therefore also not able to um 
walk properly okay because there is no sensation coming from the ground okay so he has what is called ataxia okay kind of stamping kind of gait but he will all the time look down this looking down helps him to walk better now there is an important point we need to note okay so ataxia corrected by vision is something we need to put in our brain and then let's go forwards and understand that in this lesion of fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus on which side will i feel the lesion okay is something we've not discussed suppose the lesion is at the level of spinal cord on one side or at the level of lower medulla on one side the loss of sensation will be on the side of the lesion because the fibers have not crossed yet but if it the lesion is in higher medulla or in thalamus or in cerebral cortex or anywhere in between then it will be contralateral loss of sensation suppose i have a right side medullary lesion or i have a right side thalamic lesion but the loss of sensation i feel will be on the left side because the fibers cross over okay so where the fibers crossed is very very important remember it's very rare to have a pure posterior column lesion usually some other tract is always will always be involved one little uh, spinal cord lesion i wish to discuss with you before i end this uh, class uh, tapes dorsalis it's a neurological condition resulting from untreated syphilis where there is lesion bilateral region in the root entry zone you can see it here this is where the lesion is okay because the root entry zone is lost the posterior funiculus of both the sides shows lesions so symptoms that you will see will be loss of posterior column tract there will be paresthesia below the level of the lesion and there is lancinating sudden extreme pain in the distribution below level of lesion you have what is called locomotor ataxia remember i told you no ascending uh, sensations from the feet so patient will not have an understanding of what kind of uh, floor uh, he is dealing with patient tends to walk with a very wide gait eyes are fixed to the ground just to make sure that because he is not getting any sensation from the floor so he is compensating by looking at the floor lifting his hair, legs high up a kind of gait where he is lifting the feet high and then dropping them on the ground ataxia corrected by vision okay but now you ask the patient to close his eyes and stand for 60 seconds on the ground he will not be able to do so okay because now his eyes are not helping him this is called romberg sign positive okay so this completes my lecture on dorsal column pathways fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus these are all the additional lectures on spinal cord that bb anatomy has come up with okay i want you to see all these lectures i want you to especially do the mcqs in anatomy uh, of spinal cord which are pg entrance uh, that will help you tra train for your senior years okay the link for all these is given in the description section students do like and subscribe to my channel and please share comments i want to know what is helping you what is not helping you and what more i can do to make it easy for you to deal with your medical curriculum all right students i loved taking this lecture and i hope you enjoyed it too see you across the screen in my next lecture on spinal cord bye